Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are going to be painting up these miniatures using only what's inside the box and only the paintbrush inside the box as well. So you can see how far you can go with just this box or how 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 far you cannot go with just this box in this video. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So in this kit, besides the three termagants and ripper swarm, which you'll need to cut free and assemble, you will find six high quality citadel paints and a starter brush that could be better, but we'll paint these termagants without much trouble. I'd still suggest getting a nice detailed brush if you'd like to ease your painting experience, as long as you remember to only allow paint halfway up the bristles of your brush, no further, and never allow the paint to dry in your brush. It's better to wash out your brush too much than too little. The paints in this kit are a technical paint called Armageddon Dust, which is a much less of a paint and more of a paste, which you do not want to apply with the brush. Since I'm challenging myself to only use the items in the kit to paint with, I cut off a piece of spoon while using that to apply to the bases of the miniatures. But the point of this paint is to make the Tyranids look like they are in a sandy environment, adding a little realism to your model's appearance. The next paint is a thin, transparent paint called Contrast Paint Magos Purple. This will work to add shading as well as hue it gently towards the plum color you see in the bottle. Games Workshop's Contrast Paint range has a vast variety of colors, some being more potent and some being more gentle, and they can help you turn out an army quickly as long as you put a pale color underneath as your primer. And Speaking of priming, though I will be using the base paints of this box as a primer for the rest of the colors and even the contrast paint at one point, I'd suggest you prime your models with a spray primer. And for anything biological like these Tyranids, I think a cream or white primer would work best so you can use colors like the Magos Purple to really bring out the details of your miniatures in a single coat. Just make sure you never spray directly at the models and make sure they don't look wet at any point, because that would mean you sprayed too much on. It's quite normal to spray the model in multiple layers, waiting for each layer to dry before applying the next, just so you avoid overspraying. The next color is a base paint called Nagaroth Night, and you'll find, like many base paints, it's a bit too thick to apply directly to the miniature without it covering details, so make sure to thin it down with about three parts paint to one part water, or an acrylic medium. The next color is another thicker base paint called Corax White, an off-white color that at a glance will look like white, but is actually a cold gray. That doesn't mean you wouldn't use it as white because it will make any white areas look more natural than what a true white would create. The next paint is a layer called Thunderhawk Blue, and I have no idea why they would put it into this box instead of a black. Seems quite out of place, really, but it's a good paint. It did go on to the miniature even though I didn't have the miniature primed. It did have to be thinned down as if it were a base rather than a layer, but layers and bases are pretty interchangeable in the Citadel range. Not sure why it's here, but it's a fine paint to have if you enjoy this modest blue colour. And lastly, we have Wraithbone. I like this colour a lot, and since the cream spray primer I mentioned earlier matches this colour exactly, this colour, on top of being a nice base paint, can allow you to clean up any mistakes you make when you use that spray primer as well. Now, let's get assembling. To cut the miniatures properly off the sprue, you're going to need a pair of hobby cutters. Do not use a hobby knife for this. Do not use an X-Acto knife. Use a pair of hobby cutters and save your fingers. Ones preferably with very narrow tips so you can get as close to the model as possible and not leave much to clean up on the pieces after they have been cut off. These termagants have a fair bit of connection points with cleanup that requires a very sharp hobby knife, or if you cut very close to the miniature, just the back edge of your knife as a mold line remover or actual mold line remover that Games Workshop supplies either singly or in the paint and tools kit. I like to use the back of my knife personally as a mold line remover since it works better over curves than using the knife blade which can easily gouge too much plastic than you intended if you aren't careful. I just prefer the knife. It works the same as the mold line remover, I just prefer the knife since it means I do not need to switch between tools 
I just switched the sides of the same tool. And these models are push fit models, which means you do not need any glue to assemble them and can just push their pieces together. Though pushing them into their bases without accidentally bending them takes a little patience or takes shaving off a little of that hexagon hole the base comes with. Some models in the future will not be push fit, however, so you may want to pick up plastic glue just to use it on these simpler models before having to assemble more complex models in the future. It's up to you, and if you have never used plastic glue before, just take a couple pieces of sprue that you cut off and glue them to the rest of the sprue so you have some idea of how the plastic glue will work, how long it'll take to glue, and how much to use without making a mess. And now that they are all assembled, we can decide how to paint them. I'm going to be painting these simultaneously to save on time and waste less paint, but in this video, I'll show you each color scheme one at a time. The first color scheme will be basically following the guide on the box, and then the others will be showing off a few painting methods that you could alternatively use in painting your models. Be sure to let me know which model was your favorite at the end. Okay, so our very first termagant is going to be based with Wraithbone. Now this Wraithbone was a bit chunky, which some of the Citadel pale colors can be. That doesn't mean that you can't mix it in, even though it looks a little bit unpleasant. The Wraithbone I had was chunky. Most times Wraithbone isn't, so I was a bit surprised that I opened this one up to find it chunky. You can still use it and thin it down with water, crushing that chunky pigment into the mix until it's basically gone and applying it all over the model, making sure to leave only a thin coat behind, like many pale colors. The first coat is going to look very messy. That's perfectly normal and expected for a single coat of paint, a single coat that isn't going to be covering up details. The second coat will clean up that mess. And if needed, a third coat will give you the clean look you are going for without ever losing the details that makes this model so nice. After that has dried, which doesn't take very long, if you have other models you're working on at the same time, I'll thin down some Nagaroth Knight, and this one I'm thinning down fairly heavily, nearly one-to-one -one paint to water, so that if I apply the paint in a single direction, the edges of this carapace will be left paler than the recesses once it dries. This effect would be even better with a contrast paint, which is designed to flow into crevices no matter what direction I move my brush. But for a model this size and with my limited paint palette, I'm satisfied with a single layer of very thin Nagaroth Knight. It's important for more transparent paint though to finish a whole section without stopping, otherwise you may leave deep lines where different layers overlap instead of mix. After that, if I followed the directions, I'd be putting on Thunderhawk Blue directly to his hooves and spikes, but I don't particularly like the look of that, so I decide to instead mix Nagaroth Knight with the Thunderhawk Blue to make a deeper blue and I applied that instead. This is the first instance where I would have preferred to use a detail brush rather than the starter brush, since it's difficult to get the hoof without getting the outreaching skin. But I can go back with Wraithbone and fix up any mistakes I made if I need to. After that, I use Mago's Purple to pick out the underbody arrears that are peeking through, and also his mouth and teeth. I decided I'd prefer not to use the Corax White on the teeth as was suggested, because that would be a complete pain in the butt without the proper brush to use it with. So I popped the Tyranid off the base, applied a thick coat of Armageddon dust all over the base, careful not to leave any unnatural looking peaks, since they would dry as the unnatural peaks, and pushed the model back into place before setting it aside to let it dry. And here he is once dried. If I were to get paints to further this particular color scheme, I would get a black like Abaddon Black, because I think its claws and hooves would just look better in black, and Thunderhawk Blue could be mixed with the black to make a good grey highlight. I'd get a contrast paint, red, like Flesh Terror's Red, because if you're going biological, contrast paints are so nice to use, and Flesh Terror's Red is a very versatile red to use. Though I'd also possibly get a paler purple to highlight the purple of Nagaroth Knight. Maybe. Otherwise, I'd possibly get a pure white to either use as a base under some of the uh, other colors to make them more bright, or as a dry brush over the cream and off-white to add more contrast. And it's good to have white in general. The next color scheme I decided to try was with the Thunderhawk Blue. I hadn't worked with this color a lot before, maybe because it's a really muted color, isn't it? I can imagine it would be nice for painting jeans and cold rocks when mixed with black or white. 
but I applied it all over the miniature in two thinned coats, the first one barely thinned down and the second one a little more so that it would glide over the miniature with ease but without beading. After that I didn't know where I was going with the colors so I took a 2 to 1 ratio of Nagaroth Knight with the Thunderhawk Blue and thinned it down so that it was the Magos Purple consistency with water and applied it over the carapace so that the recesses would be that purple blue but the edges would stay mostly the Thunderhawk Blue. And while that was drying I added Nagaroth Knight alone to the edges of that carapace as well as to the hooves and claws. Again, anytime I'm using any of the base paints, you can bet they were thinned down at least at a ratio of four to one paint to water. After that had dried, I decided the skin was way too dark to see all of its details. So I grabbed Wraithbone and Thunderhawk Blue, created a highlight of a paler blue using about, I guess, three to one Wraithbone to Thunderhawk Blue. I just eyeballed it and dry brush this color onto the skin of the model. Though this isn't the brush for dry brushing, in my opinion. As long as you clean off most of the paint on your brush onto a piece of cardboard, you can angle your brush so that it sweeps across the raised areas of the model while keeping the bristles from the inner parts, allowing you to bring out all the details in a lighter highlight color in very little time, as long as you remove most of that paint from your brush. It's better to remove more from your brush than it is to leave too much behind. And after that first layer was on and starting to dry, I made an even lighter highlight color, still using only Wraithbone and Thunderhawk Blue, and did a second pass over of more dry brushing. And then I went back with more Nagaroth Night and re-shadowed the parts that I wanted darker, like his hooves and the edges of his carapace to really bring out a difference between carapace and skin. And then I painted his teeth with just Wraithbone, fixing the mistakes with the mix I'd just made. After that, I added Magos purple into the underskin areas, mostly because I didn't have another color that would work as easily. Remember, contrast paints like to flow into crevices. So Magos purple was the easiest to use here, and my only other options that was not Thunderhawk blue and Nagareth Knight was either Corex white and Wraithbone, and that would have just looked incomplete. Finally, after the Magos purple had dried, I took Corax white, mixed it with just a tiny bit of Thunderhawk blue this time, and did what was more or less a layering over the skin again. Not all the way over, just picking out the raised areas for a little more emphasis on all of its different parts. Because Thunderhawk blue was added to each of these mixes, it makes it easy to avoid the colors being too stark against each other. The last step for this was to apply the Armageddon dust to his base. But for this fellow, I decided to add it to his legs and then thin it with water so you can get an idea of him wandering through this sandy area and it collecting between his toes. Do not do this with a brush that you aren't prepared to throw away if any grit gets caught in his bristle, which is likely. But by the time I'd done this step, I'd already painted the four miniatures so was prepared for such a scenario. So here he is. I think there could definitely be more done on him, but that's all I'm doing for now. <laughs> well, let's see what we can do with the next one to make it look different, potentially. For this one, I started to apply Nagaroth Knight directly to the miniature, but that did not work since it started to bead immediately. This is why we prime our miniatures. But that's all right. I removed the Nagaroth Knight and instead covered the miniature in Magos Purple. It's a trick. No, it doesn't take the place of actually priming your miniature, but it does work as something to stick to. After the Magos purple had dried, yes, I can see your dubious eyes, but it, in a pinch, it works. Any thinned medium would work. After the Magos purple had dried, I applied the Nagaros Knight as normal, and again, it's so darn dark you can't really see the details. So I combined Nagaros Knight with some Wraithbone, and Magos purple so the lighter purple wouldn't be so dull and applied that to the skin of the miniature. I didn't particularly like that end result so since I had the Corex white and a touch of Thunderhawk blue on my palette from the other miniature, I started brushing that all over the miniature in a dry brush. I think this really shows how well dry brushing can pick out reaches on miniatures. But I still wasn't satisfied with that so I dry brushed pure Corex white onto the miniature to bring out its details even further. I should note that when dry brushing, I do not actually thin the base paint down at all, since thicker paints work easier for dry brushing, as long as you remove most of the paint off the brush and onto a piece of cardboard. After the Corox white layer was done, I decided I'd try a speckling kind of method. 
I had no idea if I could pull this off with this starter brush, but I decided to do it anyway, and I took some thinned Thunderhawk blue and dotted the carapace down in little patches. And then I took thin Nagroth Knight and did the same thing, which ended looking like this. Which wasn't as bold as I was going for, but it was nice. I had it on Armageddon Dust to see what it would look like at near completion, but since it somehow looked too much like the other two I'd painted, I decided I'd cover the entire thing down with very thinned Magos Purple to give it all a pink tint. And then I would also do the underside of all the parts of the skin with just Magos Purple, and here it is. I'm not sure how I feel about him. I may have done a couple too many steps trying to make him look different. I'll look at him again in a month or so and decide, or I will completely repaint him. And then lastly, we have the Ripper Swarm. This one, I wasn't sure how to make it different at all, so I covered him with two thin layers of Corex White, and then I colored them entirely with Magos Purple. After that, I decided I'd keep their carapaces lighter and put another layer of Corex White onto them, and then a bit of a dry breath of Wraithbone over the Corex White still allowing for the original pink of the Magos Purple to remain in the crevices to keep some shading going on. After that, I thought I'd try the feathering effect on the carapaces, though I knew there was a limit to what my starter brush could do for me. I was hopeful. I thinned down Thunderhawk Blue and started carefully making sweeping streaks from the middle of each scale down to the edge. This wasn't very fun with this brush, it gave me very little control because its end was not well defined and had a few extra strands that get in the way, but here is the end result of the feathering effect, which can, can look very striking with the right colors. And after the addition of Armageddon dust and some sprue bits so the rocks that were under their tails were not the only rocks around, here is the river swarm complete. Well, mostly complete. Of course, there's more I could do with it, but I just could not bring myself to use the starter brush any further for any of their tiny little details. The starter brush can get you all the way into basing your miniatures with their basic colors. It's fine for contrast paints as well, as long as you don't want to get into the details. As you can see with these guys, this was just one layer of Magos Purple, so it does great work in biological things, but I did feel a lot of restriction on what color scheme I could use for these miniatures. And here they are, table ready at the very least. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you had these paints, which color scheme you would go with. If any of these, if you had another color scheme in mind that you thought, my goodness, Naomi, why didn't you do this instead? You could, by all means, let me know. I'm curious what you would have come up with yourself. This was definitely part of the fun, even though I found myself so restricted, it's definitely part of the fun figuring out what color schemes you could create with these miniatures. Some of them worked, some of them maybe didn't, but overall, I'm glad that they're done. <laughs> and if you're interested in a completely different color scheme, this is one that I did in a video previously that I'll link to in the description. The sky's the limit really with how you can paint a Tyranid. It makes a great beginner's army. Thanks for watching. Make certain to like the video if you enjoyed it. Make certain to comment about the one that you liked the best or if you had a paint scheme that you would try instead. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Thanks to all you fine lords and ladies out there helping to support the channel. I really appreciate your help with things like purchasing this Termagant set and helping my videos continue to grow. I really appreciate your support. I think one of the best things you could do for a miniature that you're having trouble deciding how to paint, you're just stuck in a mid-range of I don't quite like it, but I don't know what to do with it. This is the point where you sit back and you leave your miniature alone for, I don't know, a week, several days at least, so that when you come back, you have fresh eyes and you have a fresh perspective. And maybe that miniature looked better than you thought it did, but you'd actually been staring at it for far too long. So give yourself a break, give your miniature a break and come back to it in the future. But also write down what you tried as you're trying it 
so that you'll never be questioning what you did to get a miniature to a certain point if you ever wanted to replicate it. 